Oh, this is where the Kermar for the Mass part of the BYU Idaho. And these videos will be covering lesson six, which is the distribution of sample means in the central limit there. So here's the outline for these videos. First, I'll, I'll briefly cover what's called the law of large numbers. Then I'll follow up with the distribution of sample means when the current population is not normally distributed. Then I'll talk about the distribution of sample means when the current population is normally distributed. And then I'll wrap it up with some key points. So first of all, the law of large numbers. So let me highlight this. Basically, the, by definition, the law of large numbers says the greater amount of observations in our sample, the sample mean draws closer to our population mean. Meaning as we increase our sample size, we should feel we, we should have more accuracy. We should feel more comfortable with our results. Another definition is, as the number of repetitions increase in an experiment, the proportion of an outcome observed gets closer to the probability of the outcome. For instance, if we're trying to flip a coin, and say, for instance, here's a diagram here which shows the horizontal axis being the number of tosses, the vertical axis being the proportions of heads, we may start off with most, mostly tails. But as we increase our sample size, we'll get it to where our heads is about 50%. We get it 50%. Or we could start off with being all heads. For instance, in this example, the first five flips were heads, or the tosses were heads. But as we increase our sample size, we get it to where it's closer and closer to 50% heads. And so in essence, the, lot, the greater our sample size, the more confident we feel in our accuracy okay, because of this law. Okay, so next thing I want to cover is the distribution of sample means when the current population is not normally distributed. So here is the three things we'll cover when it comes to the distribution of sample means. Shape, center, and spread. First of all was shape, and this is the more or less the key part more than anything else. As the sample size increases and becomes large, the distribution of sample means becomes approximately normal. That is what's called the central limit theorem. Make the distinction, if you will, between the central limit theorem and the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers talks about accuracy. As we increase our sample size, then our sample mean will draw close to our population mean. What the central limit theorem tells us is our sample size goes up. Then the distribution of sample means, or you could say all possible sample means, will become approximately normal. The center is that the mean of the original population is mu, then the mean of the distribution of sample means is also going to be mu. Mu is the, the Greek letter mu, which typically symbolizes the, popu the population mean. So the mean, of, another way we say in statistics is the mean of the means is equal to the mean of the original population. They're equal. But the standard deviation of the, uh, so if the standard deviation of the population is sigma, then the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay? Now here's an example, particularly with dealing with shape here. Let me just reset this here. So here's an example where we have a right skew distribution. Say, for instance, we only take a sample size of 2. Okay, and then we, and then, then we have the sample size of 2, and then here's the mean. Take another sample size of 2. Now we have a mean that's over here. We take another sample size of 2 from our current population, and then our sample mean is here. We take, I'll take one more here, another sample size of 2, and then we get a, a mean here. Now I'll just duplicate that process five times and we get this distribution. Hopefully you're starting to see the type of distribution that we have here. Okay? It is not normally distributed because we're only drawing, each time we take a sample, a sample size of two. So if we take a sample, so we just take a sample of, uh, of two a thousand times here, and we see here that we still have a right skewed distribution. However, let's, let's play, play with this here. If we have a large sample, a larger sample size, say 25, and so we'll take a sample size of 25, and then here's our, our observations, 25 observations from the parent population, we get a mean. Then we'll do it one more time here. Okay, these are our observations from the parent population, and then we get another mean. Then we do it five times, do another five times, do another five times, and I'll do it a thousand. Notice what happens to the, pop, the distribution. This is where it becomes normally distributed. So, so in essence, what this is summarizing, what I'm summarizing here is the central limit theorem. As our sample size increases and becomes large, the distribution of sample means becomes normal. So like what you see here, now what we had earlier with the sample size of two, it was a right skew distribution. But now that we have a large sample size, the distribution of sample means becomes normally distributed. Okay? Let's go through a, a couple of examples of this. So suppose the mean internet usage time of all BYU students is 10 hours of the standard deviation of 2. Distribution is right skewed. 
Suppose a random sample of 50 students were surveyed concerning their internet usage. What is the mean, standard deviation, and shape of the distribution of sample mean internet usage times based on a sample of 50 students? So the mean, this is the symbol, the mean of the means, so the mean of all possible sample means, is equal to the mean of the original, pop, uh, original population, or the current population, which is 10 hours. This is the 10 hours up here. Okay. The standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is the original distribute this uh, standard deviation from the current population, which is 2, divided by the square root of 50, which is 0.283. And the shape of this distribution is normal, or bell-shaped, because, because we have a large enough sample size of 50. That would be considered a large enough sample size. So now what I want you to do is that I want you to uh, tr uh, stop, the, stop the video and try this on your own. Go through this problem by yourself. And the question I want you to ask is, uh, what is or answer is, what is the mean, the standard deviation, and shape of the distribution of the mean number of college credits that a student has taken by the time he or she takes an intro to stats class? Okay, so the mean is 64 and the standard deviation is 31, and that this distribution is right skewed. So the question is, what is the mean? And the mean, the mean of the means of all possible sample means is equal to the mean of the original population, the current population, which is 64. The standard deviation of the sample means is the standard deviation, which is 31 divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 100, and we get 3.1. The, the shape is normally distributed because our sample size is large enough so we can say that this is normally distributed. Okay? So now what I'd like to do is talk about the distribution of sample means when the parent population is normally distributed. Okay? So now this becomes a little bit easier. Now we'll talk about again shape, center, and spread. Now I'll I'll cut I'll skip to center and spread because these two lines here are the same as what we've seen before. The mean of the means, or the mean of the population, if the mean of the population is mu, then the mean of the distribution of sample means is also mu. And then the, that's the same thing as what we saw in the previous slides. If the standard deviation of the population is sigma then the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is sigma divided by the square root of the n. And I forgot to mention earlier, sigma is typically in statistics how we describe the population standard deviation. But the one thing that's changed when we have a parent population is normally distributed. Regardless of the sample size of n, the shape of the distribution of the sample means is normal. Okay? So let me go back to this here. I'm going to change this up here to where now it's a normal, normally distributed. So say, for instance, instead of a sample size of 25, we just have a sample size of 2. So I'll, I'll just go through and animate this here. Here's a sample size of 2. With, here's the mean. I'll do it again. Here's the mean. Do it one more time. Here's the mean. So now I will. Now, what do you think this distribution will be? Well, by definition, if we keep doing this here, this distribution will take on a shape. It's going slow because it's only a sample size of 2. But as you see here, you start to see that it becomes a normal distribution. Now, granted, our standard deviation is a little bit wider than what we've seen before, but the data looks still approximately a normal distribution. In fact, it's starting to form, form into a nice curve. Okay. Now, if I increase the sample size to 25, we'll just cut to the chase here. Here's, a, here's five, five samples, and there are their means. Do it again. Do it again. And notice here that the shape of this distribution, I'll do this a thousand times, becomes approximately normally distributed. But if you look at the standard deviation, it's much smaller. And the reason for this is because of the formula that you see here, sigma divided by the square root of n. If we have a larger sample size, that sample, that, that if we have a larger sample size, this entire standard deviation here is going to be smaller. Okay? And in fact, if you look at it, it comes close. If we take 5 divided by the square root of 25, it's 5 divided by 5, it's basically 1. So we've got it pretty darn close to what we have here. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through a couple of examples again with the standard deviation, with, uh, with the parent population being normal. So the length of human, in fact, what I'll do is let me stop the recording and I'll continue this here on part two.